Luke 19 verse 1, then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich and he sought to see who Jesus was but could not because of the crowd for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was going to pass that way. Excuse me. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when, he, when they saw it, the crowd saw it, they all complained, saying, he, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to Lord, Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore them fourfold. And, today, and Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house. So I want to say amen. Amen. So I want to split this sermon into three, into three categories or three, or three part segments of, of the sermon. And the first segment I want to talk about is trying. Zacchaeus was trying to see Jesus. He, <clears throat> he lived a bad life. He was, uh, everyone knew him as a bad person. He was rich. It, it wasn't because he was rich, but the way that he got rich was in very bad, bad ways. Ripped people off, cheated people, and he was just living a bad life. And, but, and, and still in that, Zacchaeus still wanted to see Jesus. And I believe, I believe that, that speaks for everyone here is no matter who it is, if you're atheist, if you're Catholic, if you're a Buddhist, if you're Muslim, what, whoever you are, if there is a God out there that you deep inside, you have a craving to know this God. There, you have a craving to experience this God. And that's exactly what uh, Zacchaeus was. He, he was a bad person, but he still craved to see Jesus. And when Jesus was passing by, the Bible says he could not see the crowd. But he could not see Jesus because of the crowd. But we both know it wasn't the crowd that was the reason that he couldn't see Jesus. The real reason, the Bible says one verse later, is, is because he was of short stature. And see, something Zacchaeus and I have in common, you and I, Zacchaeus, have in common is we all are short. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, we all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. So we have something in common. And all you short people in the house, it's not your fault. <laughs> you, weren't, you weren't born short, you know what I mean? Uh, you didn't be, I mean, you were born short. You didn't become short. Like, hey, no, you're in the womb, and you, like, selected your characters in the womb. Short, medium size, a blonde hair. No, you didn't. You were just born short. And so we, we are born short of reaching the glory of God. From the set, from the get-go, we were, we were never going to be able to reach God's standard, to achieve the standard of God. And God knew that. And so, but a lot of times when we're in there, we, we like to put excuses. And we say, well, the reason I, don't, I can't reach God is because of the crowd. It's because of Christians. No, I, I met a Christian. Uh, Christians are hypocrites. And Christians say that they're this. And Christians are, Christians are hypocrites. And that's why I don't want to go to church. Well, Walmart has hypocrites, but we still shop there. Yeah. Jim has... J Jim has Overweight people. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> but, <laughs> we said, Jacob, we'll pray for you. Um, <laughs> Jim has overweight people, but we still go there. Yeah, amen. At those that go, Jim. Um, the hospital has sick people. Well, yet, when you get sick, where do you go? You go to the hospital. So the crowd wasn't really the issue of why we could not see Jesus. It was because we are short. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all fall short of what of what we can reach God. We can, it's not by our, our uh, deeds. It's not by our accomplishments of what we can do to reach God. We can't. And, but the thing with Satan, what Satan will do is, Satan will offer a, a counterfeit. Satan will offer a false safety that, in, in, that you will follow the crowd. You will be in the crowd that follows Jesus as long as you don't get to know Jesus. Mm. He 
will let you come to church every Sunday. The kids love it in the kids zone. Worship, good vibes, really good. I like the drummer. Um, <laughs> the kids zone is really good. The, the, the music is really good. I get, I get really just tears and Jesus, Jesus is so good. And, and, and he will offer that. He will let that. If he knows he can't stop you from going to church, he will let, he'll give you a, 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 a counterfeit, a, a false safety that, that you can follow Jesus as long as you don't get to know Jesus. Because there was a lot of people that were following Jesus, but he never got to know Jesus. They never, they never experienced Jesus. Amen? And it's just like, I don't know if any of you have uh, flown uh, somewhere on an airplane you can get to get to the airport and then no when you've ever I, I've missed a plane once no you're in the airport but you get to that place you're in the airport and you get to the place and your the gates are shut and the plane is taken off you got to the airport but you missed the airplane see the purpose of the airport is not to be in the airport. The purpose of the airport is to get to the plane. The purpose of church is to get to Christ. The purpose of, uh, of Sunday is to begin to get to know Jesus. Is to begin to experience him. But the thing is, you and I, we're short. We can't do, we can't do our deeds, can't measure up to begin to uh, reach God's standard. We can't begin to, uh, begin to try super hard. And the thing is, Zacchaeus was trying. And then maybe you're in today, you're like Zacchaeus. You're trying to get to know Jesus. You're trying to get better. That's why we have the self-help books. That's why we go to the gym to, to get better, to look better. We try, but yet we all fall short of the glory of God. If I can encourage you something, I'm going to encourage you. Don't settle for joining, in the, for joining the crowd in your attempt of finding Jesus. Don't settle for just coming on Sunday, Sunday church, Wednesday church, Thursday church, and, and getting the good feeling, but yet going back to your lives that's broken, shattered, busted, and disgusted. Don't settle for that. And what I love about the, the, the purpose for church is, is to reach Christ. The purpose for the airport is to reach the plane, to reach your destiny, to reach what God has in store for you. The Bible says, I know the plans that I have for you they're for good and for not for not for evil to give you a future and a hope says God amen and that is the purpose of church is not to come and get a feel good Sunday and get a check mark and I'm going to heaven church isn't life isn't just about salvation so we see Zacchaeus is trying really hard he's trying and his attempt to reach Jesus fails and he gets really discouraged. He gets really sad. And like, man, I can't see Jesus. It's the crowd's fault. But the thing is, Zacchaeus doesn't stop there. He doesn't settle just to be in the crowd. Knowing his, his bad, knowing his wrong, he doesn't settle just to be in the crowd. What Zacchaeus did, so he's trying. What Zacchaeus does after that is he's fine. Oh, look, there's a tree. Perfect. Jesus is going to be walking by here in like five minutes. So, he gets and he climbs onto the tree. And what I love about this is, is when Jesus, when Zacchaeus climbs onto this tree, the Bible says, Jesus looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus. When Zacchaeus climbed on that tree, it wasn't Zacchaeus that saw Jesus. It was Jesus that saw Zacchaeus. Can I tell you about a tree that was planted 2,000 years ago? The cross of Calvary that me and you trying so hard, trying to be good at for all the short people like you and I that fall short constantly on a daily basis no matter how hard we try. For you and I, I'm going to tell you there's a tree that was planted 2,000 years ago that if you climb on that tree, not only you will see God, not only you will see Christ, but Jesus will see you. Jesus will see the blood that was shed for you. God will see the price that was paid for you. When God, when people say that you, it's not, you don't, don't deserve it, that you couldn't earn it, God says, I don't see that. When I see you climb onto the tree, I see one thing and one thing only. I see my son. And something that happens there is 
Jesus calls him by his name, Zacchaeus. I want, to, I want you to see what the original language says about Zacchaeus. It says he is pure and innocent. Tax collector that robbed people, cheated people, lied to people, did so many things. Yet, Jesus called him by his name. I want to tell you something. Satan knows your name. Satan knows your destiny. Satan knows your worth. Satan knows who you are destined to be, yet will call you by your sin. But what I love about our Father, what I love about Jesus, is Jesus knowing your sin, knowing what you did last night, still calls you by your name, still calls you by who he says you are, still calls you a son, still calls you a daughter, still calls you wonderfully and beautifully made. He says, son and daughter, I know who you are. I know the plans that I have for you. I know the sins that you did. But the thing is, I put your sin as far from the east as to the west. When I see you and you climb on that tree, I don't see you. I see the sun. See, and that's what we're trying to accomplish through this series, Embrace Grace, is we want to challenge you that in the midst of your mistakes and your failures and your, and, your, and your troubles, that you can climb onto the tree, that you can climb onto the cross and hug the cross and hug the cross and say, God, I, I'm a, I embrace your grace. I embrace, God, the salvation that you've given me. I couldn't earn it, God. I couldn't deserve it, God. But it's your love that you have for me. Embrace grace. Jesus sees you. Religion says try harder. Jesus says trust. Religion, religion's gonna make you jump. See Jesus, Jesus, where, you're, Jesus, Jesus, right there. He's going to let you, religion lets you have a glimpse of Jesus, but a relationship with Jesus lets you have a gaze of Jesus. Every day it's a communion with Jesus. Every day it's, it's when you climb onto that tree, not only you see God, but God sees you. God sees your issues. God sees the broken home. God sees the broken marriage. God sees the broken family. God sees the education that's failing. God sees the sickness that you have. And says, Zacchaeus, I see you. Come down. Religion is you trying to see God. Gospel is trusting Jesus. The only way to God is through Jesus. It's not our good deeds. It's not our what we can do. It's not what we can accomplish. Some people are like, man, this is a slap in the face. What about all those years that I've done good? What, all those orphanages that I gave, God bless you. God will... In heaven, he will reward you. Maybe even on earth, he will reward you. All those years that I, I didn't smoke. Like Pastor Vlad says, God didn't put a chimney on your head for you to smoke. So don't smoke. It's good for your lungs. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I went to prayer, everything. That's good. That's for, that's for your own benefit. I fasted. That's for your own good health, your relationship with Christ. But it's not our good deeds that gets us to heaven. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. That is Jesus. Yeah, because if, it's, if we're going to go by the way where it's my good deeds, Jesus, wouldn't, Jesus didn't die on the cross for you to see how much Jesus can suffer. You think God sent his son to show you, look, look how much my son could get beat. No. He showed you so that there's a way for salvation. That he can show you how much he loves you. Not to show how much he can suffer. If it was just that, it would be something else. There's only one way to, to God. That's through Jesus. Because if it's going to go through our good deeds. If it's going to go through the way I can get through to Jesus. Because of all the good that I did. We got to look on the opposite side. What about one sin that you commit? What about the one, the one fault that you commit? What are you going to do? Say, oh God, don't, don't look at that one. Look at all the good, but just don't look at, the, don't look at that one. If I, if, I give you a cup of, if I give you a cup of water, it's all good. It's just freshly open. If I give you this, 
and say it's perfectly fine and take a drink out of it but I put one drop of poison in it just one it's amazing it's a, it's a big cup of water a whole bunch of good but if I put one drop of poison in there and say take a drink it's just a whole bunch of good and one bad you'd be like no you trying to kill me no me but it's just one drop all it takes is one sin for you to be condemned See, when, you, when I used to think, when I, no, I get a ticket, you no, know, it'd be all the good, no, the justice, you know, the justice scale, the, I know, in the school, yeah. The justice scale, I used to think that it was, it was a whole bunch of all your good versus all your bad. That's how it's going to be measured. But until you get your first ticket and you realize it's not all that, it's not all your good years of driving versus your one ticket. No, it's your one ticket versus perfection, versus the law. But the thing is, Jesus knew that. God knew that. That it's not, it's not my good deeds because all it takes is one fault and the scale tips. And I'm going straight to hell. Jesus, God, God knew that. So what he did is he sent his son to die on the cross for you and I. So that the Bible, the Paul says, it's no longer I, but Christ in me. That when I step on the scale, it's not I that steps on the scale. It's Jesus that's perfect. It's Jesus that's sinless. That took my sins on the cross. He steps on the scale. All of a sudden, it starts to even out. I'm going to tell you a story of a... A tribe leader, maybe you guys have heard it before, but there was a tribe leader and he, he made up the whole bunch of, he had his tribe, his village, and he made up a whole bunch of rules. Um, he made about a hundred rules. Uh, no, if you create this, if don't defraud, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. Because if you do, there's a whole bunch of rules. If you do, you get a hundred lashes. Everyone's like, ooh, that's bad. So everyone, the first couple of days, everyone was like, okay, I'm not going to create. I'm not going to do any bad because no one wants to get beat. You know what I mean? Uh, good old days of getting beat. Um, so no one wants to get beat. And, and then all of a sudden, a couple, about a week later, there's this one kid that, that stole something, a piece of gum or something, something small. And everyone gathers around and lo and behold, it's the tribe leader's son. And everyone gets around like, <clears throat> what, what's going to happen is, is the tribe leader is going to let him go because his son, he's, is he going to, no, you can't beat his son. I mean, what kind of a father would he be? You know, that's your son. He's going to die for a piece of gum, really? But, but on the other, den, uh, uh, the other side, if he doesn't, what is he going to give him a free pass just because it's his son? Just because it's someone that he loves, he's going to give his son a free pass and Everyone gathers around because they're like, man, is, this, is he going to uh, play favorites with his son or is he going to beat his son? What kind of father would he be? So I, everyone gathers around and, and they gather around and they, they will look what's going to happen. Tribe leader says, yes, I'm going to, my, my son deserves the punishment and he's going to get the punishment. So they take off the shirt <clears throat> of, off his son and they strap his son to a pole and they're about to beat him. But right before they beat him the father says hold up and he takes off his shirt covers the back of his son and says now you can now you can begin so that he upheld the law but showed love to his son see if, G if God did not let Jesus die on the on the cross for you and I for our sins he would me and you would go straight to hell because God's holiness demanded a price to be paid. God's love provided a son. God's holiness demanded a price to be paid. God's love gave the price. Gave the payment. God's love gave the son to die on the cross for us. For me and you. That's why we can't boast about our deeds that's why we can't boast about what we can do it's only through a relationship through Christ that we can get to heaven it's only through a relationship through Christ that we can get to to the father relationship can't be based off your good deeds relationship with Christ cannot be based off what good that you've done what good that you've accomplished in your life it only can be based off trust before the with the father it can only be based off getting onto that tree embracing grace embracing the love 
that the Father has given us. Amen? Trusting brings salvation. So I want you to see, it, there's trying where Zacchaeus tries and he, he tried to do good and yet he failed. And then there's trusting. And today, just like you know, the airport and the plane, if you're in the airport, we're going to give a call today, loud and clear, that if in your, if you're in the airport, that you don't miss the plane. That the purpose of being in the airport is not about the airport, but it's about getting on the plane. It's about reaching Christ. Amen. It's not about church. It's about Jesus. Trying, trusting, and then there's a third part, and I think it's the most important. That's what I want to really focus on. It's about transformation. Jesus, when Jesus saw Zacchaeus, he looked at Zacchaeus and he said, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down. I must go to your house. And Zacchaeus was like, <clears throat> what did you say? Like, my house? Like, you sure? Like, like right now, my house? Or like, like can you, Zac Jesus, can you give me five minutes? My girlfriend is uh, in my house. I got to tell her a dip real quick. Uh, there's, there's something in, in, in my fridge that you're probably not going to like. Let, I'm going to have my friends just throw it out real quick. Hold up. My, my room is a whole bunch of mess, a whole bunch of underwear, socks. I'm going to have them clean it real quick. Just give me five minutes. Jesus, I wasn't expecting you to, to come to my house. But see, what, what happens a lot of times is when we come here to the front is Jesus, Jesus doesn't want to be left at church this Sunday to the next. Jesus says, and I have a word for you now. I must go to your house. I know the mess that you have. And the thing is, when Zacchaeus got down, people laughed at him. People said, do you know who he is? He still does drugs. Do you know the life that he lives? It's terrible. It's shattered. Do you know the marriage that they have? Lord of Jesus, it's on the fourth one already. Do you know the kind of life that they're living? But she, he doesn't pay attention to that. Knowing that she doesn't deserve Jesus at his house. He still got up and said, all right, well, we're going to our house. He's going to see it. This today is the day. And he went, he went to the house. And I believe this is where transformation begins. I believe accepting Jesus here at the altar is where salvation begins. But I believe Jesus didn't just come for salvation, but he came to transform your life. He came to begin to, to that he says, son, daughter, I want you, I want to go home with you. I want to take you by the hand and go to the messy the life that you have. I want to take your hand. I want to go to the broken marriage that you have, the broken relationship with have, the broken finances that you have, the broken family that you have. Zacchaeus, I want to go to your house and he's asking you to say yes to that call he's asking you to say yes to that call don't just leave Jesus at the altar Sunday after Sunday take Jesus home with you and maybe you're saying but I don't deserve it Zacchaeus didn't deserve it either but it's the fact of getting onto the cross and saying this is not something I deserve but God thank you God, this is not something I could even earn or work for. But thank you. I accept it. I say yes to your call. I say yes to taking you home with me. Overcome what people have to say about your life. What people know. Maybe you have a reputation of, of this person. When, when people... See, people will call you by your name, but Jesus is calling, people will call you by your sin, but Jesus is calling you today by your name. Saying, Joseph, Isaac, I want to go home with you. Mary, I want to go home with you. I know your life is broken. That's exactly why I, why I want to be at your home. And Zacchaeus began to overcome what people said. Christianity is the only relationship, only religion. Every other religion says you have to reach God. You have to do, to do you have to try to reach God. You have to do this to, to reach God. You have to do, you have to sacrifice your life. You have to sacrifice your son. You have to do this to reach God. Christianity is the only religion said, that says God 
wants to reach you. And he's saying to trust him. What I love about the story of Zacchaeus when he takes Jesus home is when he, he, takes, when he takes Jesus home, Jesus doesn't come to Zacchaeus' house and he says, all right, things are going to change. You move that over there. Alcohol has to go out of the fridge. Your girlfriend has to go or get married, do one of those. Um, uh, this thing has to go. Those magazines have to go. That computer has to go. That's not doing no good. That has to go. You got to start tithing. Uh, Jesus International, start tithing every 10%, make up all those mothers that you stole from and you ripped off and they're struggling. You got to give back fourfold. You got to start doing that. You got to start doing, come on, Zacchaeus. You, you can't be sleeping or you can't be doing that. You can't, he doesn't do anything. All he is, is he's in the house and simply God's presence in the house. Zacchaeus says, all right, Jesus. So I'm going to start uh, giving back to the, the, to the mothers. I'm going to start giving every person that I ripped off. I'm going to start giving back fourfold. And Jesus says, now salvation has come to this house. The presence of Jesus, simply the presence of Jesus begins to transform the atmosphere. Simply the presence of Jesus begins to transform your life. You will never be the same after a touch of Jesus. After you experience Jesus, he said, son, daughter, I want to go to your house. I want to go to your house, to your messy life, to your marriage, to your relationship. Take me home with you. Take me home with you. I'm going to ask that you say yes to the call. That you say yes to Jesus. That you stop trying to live the good life that you're living. Stop, stop trying to go by your own deeds, your own good, your own, your own thing. Because you will burn out. You will, you will start sliding back. You, it just won't be good. The Bible doesn't say by your good deeds. The Bible says not by might, not by power. But by the Spirit. It's only by the Holy Spirit's guidance. By the relationship with Him. If I could propose a theory or idea to you that when you accept Jesus, when you take Jesus home, to stop working on yourself constantly. It might sound like a little bit of heresy, but stick with me a couple moments. It might sound like it's, what do you mean? Stop working on my character. Stop. stop. What happened is... Zacchaeus was there, his life was bad, his life, his character, his, the life that he lived was terrible. But the moment that Jesus came into his house, he began to change the, the simple fact of God's presence living inside of you day by day begins to change. And, and the moment you stop focusing on your character, on the good deeds and, and trying to do it all yourself and you focus on the presence, you focus on the presence of God in your life, what begins to happen is... Through relationship with Christ, taking Jesus home, fruits of the Holy Spirit begin to manifest. And fruits of the Holy Spirit is Christian character. Kindness, goodness, peace, patience, self-control, gentleness, a faithfulness, all of this. This is, this is all fruits of the Holy Spirit. And you, when you stop focusing and you shift your, your, your perspective, your view onto Jesus, onto trusting Jesus, climbing onto that tree and taking Jesus home to your messy life, to your messy situation, to your messy marriage. And you start focusing on a relationship with Him, a communion with Him, coming to morning prayer, Friday to Monday through Friday, beginning to fast Monday through Wednesday with us when you begin to focus on a relationship with him he begins to work on your character he begins to bring the fruits of the Holy Spirit he said you were struggling with anger here's here's kindness here's here's gentleness and he begins to work on you begin to shift your your focus on on your character on trying to do good to trust in Jesus from trying trying to do good to to climbing on that tree and just grabbing onto Jesus and say Jesus I can't do it on my own Jesus I can't I can't manage on my own it's not it's not I can't do any good I've tried but I'm messed up I'm in the same messed up place that I was years ago to 
coming down that tree and say, Jesus, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to begin. And I believe that's where Holy Spirit begins to work on you. He begins to work on your life, your character, your, your, your things that you need. And he begins to mend the broken hearts. He begins to mend the families. Is when you begin to take Jesus home. Hey, this is Pastor Vlad. And thank you for watching this sermon. Please click on the subscribe so that you can be a part of our Hungry Generation YouTube community. And click on the bell as well so that you can be notified when we upload the new sermon. Thank you for watching and God bless you.